Hi guys! In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a woven blanket. Um, so these um, gorgeous blankets here, I've got two different styles. Um, they're brilliant for using in your setups. You can either use them as a basket stuffer which can go in a basket or a bowl underneath your uh, newborn or you could use them a bit more like a rug and put them underneath a basket or bowl um, or even you know sit a toddler or a child on top of them like again like a rug so I've got two different sorts one which is using um, a bit more chunky yarn and one which is a thinner yarn but I've doubled it up and you can see I've got sort of two strands of yarn for each kind of warp and weft that I've woven together. So they're both exactly the same technique. So you can use um, whatever yarn you can source and use this technique um, with it, which is brilliant. And again, any size as well. So I'm gonna show you um, a particular size today, which I will give you the dimensions for, so you know what length to cut your um, strands of yarn to. But yeah, you can basically do it any size, shape, you know, don't have to be, these are square, but you can do them rectangular as well as square. And the size of your fringe can vary. You can have them, you know, short or really long. Um, also on this one, I've got, um, I've made one side really fluffy and one side I've kept as the yarn. So it's a bit more kind of detailed and precise. So it depends on what your style and which you, you prefer. So let's get um, started. So for this one, um, I've used this kind of thick yarn, which is about kind of two centimeters wide, um, which is the sort of perfect yarn to use really, but I know it is, can be quite difficult to source and find. Um, so if you can't find any that thick, then now this is a typical, um, it's called super chunky, but it's really isn't kind of super chunky in, in what we would want it to be. But this is what it, you can easily find from a shop. Um, and it comes out sort of this thickness. So, which is why I kind of doubled it up to make it thicker. Um, but, it, you know, it gives a really nice kind of detailed pattern, which might be, you know, perfect look that you want um, as opposed to this one. So, um, a little kind of, background on weaving if you don't really kind of know what weaving is it is basically you've got you have got what's called a, a kind of warp and a weft so you have lots of strands going in one direction and then lots of strands going in the kind of opposite direction and they're both kind of interconnected so you go kind of up and you know over and under and over and under you, you'll see as we go along um, typically, these uh, sort of woven pieces, if you like, are made on a loom, like a, a wooden loom, like this one. Or it could be a, um, a small, kind of little one, like this one. We can also make um, a cardboard loom, like this one. Which I will be showing you um, how to make a cardboard loom and... and how to use that as a different technique in another video, so look out for that. Um, but for these, um, we're literally gonna be freehand. So we don't need any tools or any kind of base um, to sort of stretch the yarn onto. It's literally gonna be, be freehand, which is gonna be, which is the fun part of it. Um, so first step, it's all made of sort of long lengths of yarn. So first step we need to do is to cut lengths, lots of lengths, so they're all the same size. So for this one, I have um, already cut a, a load. So I'm gonna finish off cutting the lengths of this one. I'm using this as a basis for the, the so I know what length that I did it to. Um, but say I will put up a, um, a sort of worksheet with some recommended sizes. This one's I'm doing today, many of the tutorial, is quite a small one. Um, but you can obviously go to whatever size you want. But I will put up kind of how many lengths you need. I think this one is, it's 12 lengths going one way and then obviously 12 the other way. So you need 24 lengths, all the same size. 
I'm just going to finish cutting these links. There we go. So then obviously with this one, we're going to do um, exactly the same. You're going to measure out your lengths. Like that. And then obviously you're going to use two together in the same way that you'd use sort of one of this thicker one. Now a little, if you're using um, this yarn, I'm going to use um, this thicker yarn as an example today, but it's exactly the same technique for sort of doubling up. We could even put three together and have a go at that. Um, because this is um, commercially bought yarn, um, whereas this yarn is um, a process that I've used to make my own yarn. So this one, if you can see, it has got like a slight twist to it. So it has been slightly spun on a wheel. But if we were to untwist it, like this, you see it untwisting, it will kind of puff up a little bit and go slightly thicker. Especially when you get to doing the fringes. So these fringes are fluffed up quite nicely. So they're a lot kind of thicker. Um, whereas they're, they're quite tightly woven together in the actual piece. So as I go along, I, I have untwirled them all a little bit. Just to give it a bit more of depth and a bit more sort of puffiness like the, the thicker yarn. So that's a little kind of handy hint that you can um, try. So yes, yeah, so if you're using this sort of yarn, you need a lot of these. So I'll put that the details of how many I used um, in the kind of PDF or little worksheet that I'll put together for you. So that is for that one. So um, move on to this. This is how I'm going to show you how to do it. It'll be a bit quicker than doing the fine stretch. So here we go. I have 24 lengths and we're going to start weaving. So First step is you need to take take two of them and you're going to make a cross like this. <laughs> and then you're going to layer two side by side like this so they go over the top of this one in the middle. So now I've created three links. So now I want one which is going to go this way. But I can't just lay it over the top. I need it to weave it in and out the opposite to this other length. So see this length here? It goes underneath this first one. Then it goes over the top. Then it goes underneath. So I've got to do the opposite this side. So I've got to go over the top. Then underneath. Then over the top. And then you can see it starts to kind of interconnect with each other. So then I'm going to do the same on this other side. So I need to go over the top and underneath like that. So there we have the start of our blanket with an all nice little interconnecting square in the middle. And this is basically the technique. So we need to just continue going all the way around making sure that we're going um, opposite so over, under, over, under, but opposite to the, the length um, previous to it, either side of it. So if we now do one, another one this way, so I can see I need to go over, then under, then over. And as you go, you can kind of pull them tighter and sort of push them up, depending whether you want a kind of loose look or a tight look. So it's quite easy to start off with because you haven't got many lengths going on. So it's easy to just lift one up and kind of tuck it underneath. But it does get a bit more complex as we uh, work our way to the edges. So I'm going to do another one uh, this way. So again, over, under, over, under. Like that. Pull it tight. And then again, over under, over, under, over. All right, so you can see it's starting to take shape already. 
and just literally continue like that I and mean, it'll be quite obvious if you miss one so if I do um, this I know this needs to be over under kind of over under and I do that and then I look back and I can actually see oh something doesn't look quite right here so I can e quite easily see that I've gone wrong so over under over oh this one needs to be under so I can then pull that through. So there's no fixing at this point. They are literally just interconnecting with each other. You know, a bit like knitting. There's no there's no kind of attaching and knitting. It's literally kind of knots, isn't it, to keep it held together. <clears throat> so this just kind of over, under, interconnecting, weaving, is what's literally going to hold the blanket together. Although we do have a magic fixing technique at the end, which we all see. So, yeah, literally, oh, look, and I still haven't quite done it right here. I need to make sure I'm over on that end there. So your eye will grow used to kind of how it should look, and you'll, you'll easily be able to see if you've gone wrong somewhere. And you can easily change it, because we're not fixing, or even not even knotting things together. So, where if you go wrong in knitting, you're like, oh, I've got to have to undo it and do it over again. It doesn't you know, really matter quite so much with this, it's easy. So I'm going to quickly finish this off going all the way around. It doesn't really matter what order you do it on. You could do it kind of all this way, this way, and then go all that way. Or you can do kind of a length at a time going round, then up, and across, then round. Whichever way feels uh, best to you, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to quickly build this up for you. Right, so there we have it. I've gone all the way around the outside. Now you might decide that um, these ends are a bit too long for your liking, so add a few more or keep them this nice length. And you can always trim them afterwards as well. So you might have noticed that as I kind of wove all the bits um, in, I've been sort of pulling on the ends to tighten them up. So literally kind of pull and push each bit in to get it the kind of tightness that you want so you can keep it quite loose um, but obviously the tighter you kind of pull it the more um, kind of stronger the connection so it does, won't fall apart quite so much so you do want to um, pull it to a certain degree so I'm gonna keep going around and just kind of tighten them up also making it quite you know you can either make it really even and uniform or you could make it a bit more organic and kind of um, mishaps and, and uneven if, if that's the style that you that you want. So that's the joy of making your own props. You can literally kind of 
dictate the style that you want it to be. If your style is a bit more kind of rustic and organic and not as precise, then go with it. Go with the flow and see what you come up with. So nearly done with that. So keep just playing around with it so it's how you want it to look. Something doesn't look quite right in this corner. That's better. No. Under, over, under, over. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. Make sure it's how you, you want it to look. Also, if some of the lengths look a bit longer on one side than the other, you can easily just hold it down and kind of pull it through a bit to make sure it is roughly kind of equal around your edges. But so, we're going to trim it. You can trim the edges anyway. There we go. So, as you see, we basically have our blanket ready. But, as you can probably see, the end pieces are obviously very loose and going to just kind of work their way apart. I mean, you could just go with it and use it like that if you're very careful and gentle with it. But really, we want it to be a bit more kind of fixed. Now, on a normal loom, you would, the ends, you'd have, so you'd say you'd have... Um, this direction kind of up and down would be attached to your um, loom and then this way would be kind of one continuous length and it would be going round and then looping round here and around and looping so all these end bits would be like tucked in like this and that's what kind of helps it would look kind of like that that's what helps it stay together and keep it kind of not from falling apart and then the end bits that you would kind of tie them but that's really not the look that we want for this this um, kind of layer. I wanted a fringe all the way around the outside. So this is what I came up with. It's literally doing it freehand. And then the magic bit that we're going to do now to fix these ends is, have you guessed it? The trusty glue gun. Right, so you might be thinking, oh, I really don't want to use glue on my nice, soft, fluffy blanket but if you do it correctly and are very careful you really won't notice and know it's there and it, it really does work so basically the aim is each one of these which is like loose we're going to put a blob of glue and you're going to stick this down but we're only going to put a little bit and you're going to not just kind of put the glue on and then press because that's going to cause your glue to go through the wall to the other side and like stick to the table. That's why I've got a, a mat here just in case. But the trick is to just use a little bit and then to like pinch. So you're just fixing the kind of bottom layer and the top layer all together but not making the glue go through it and getting into a mess. I mean it doesn't matter if bits of glue go through. You can kind of trim little bits of glue off afterwards but it is... You need just a little bit of glue so it doesn't spread and you don't see it. That is the trick. But it is easy to do. So we're basically going to put a blob of glue, just a little bit on there. And I'm going to tighten it, put it down and I'm going to squeeze it like that, like pinch it. I'm not going to press down. And that way it doesn't go through. It may go for a little, like a little bit, which is why I've got this mat. But yeah, the trick is just a little bit, a little blob, and then just like pinch it so I'm not pushing it down onto the table. And just, yeah, be aware, obviously glue guns are really super hot. You don't really want to get be getting glue right on your fingers because it will burn. So just a little bit. And then pinch. I am kind of 
pulling it tight and pushing it up as I do it to make sure um, it is as tight as I want it. So blob of glue and then pull it tight and pinch. And that is literally enough, as much as you need, to hold it into place because you know, these blankets, they're not going to get really roughly kind of used unless you use them a lot as a blanket with kids maybe sat on it. But you can always go, you know, afterwards if it's kind of fallen apart a little bit, you can always get your glue gun and just fix it up again. But generally, um, Maddie's probably going to be used more as a newborn blanket. Therefore, they're, you know, they're, they're going to be kind of just laid down and not really ruffled or, or used. Therefore, it doesn't matter too much that they're not like super duper fixed together. But they are, you know, this really does work. They will be fixed together well. So basically just keep going round everywhere there's a, a loose bit, blob of glue and pinch together. So the corners you need double the amount. So And it is a bit of a laborious task, but it is worth it in the end. So I'm going to put up like a, a price comparison kind of chart. So I'll tell you how much, how much will have used, how much it cost, um, and the ton of time it takes compared to how much it would cost you to buy this, you know, from a prop vendor that somebody else had made. But just, you know, bear in mind the amount of freedom that you have of making this yourself. You know, you can literally choose the exact colour that you want. You can choose, you know, how tight or loose it is. You can choose what you do with the fringes at the end. You know, you can, you know, the possibilities are endless to make it your style and how you want it to look and the, size, the exact size of it. And... Right, so I'm just going to do uh, this like this side. Right, so once you've gone all the way around the outside, um, you need to then turn it over. And then we're going to do the back kind of loose ones. So then you're doing exactly the same. Rub of glue, pulling it tight and just pinching. And we're doing like the opposite length. And, you know, really, if you're literally only using a blob of glue, see, I, you know, doing that, I can't feel the glue at all. So you would never know that it's there. But it's just enough to fix it and hold it in place. on the end so so there you have it that is how you make it and if you you know it's exactly the same technique for whichever type of yarn you decide to use and you know you can use any yarn use ply twisted yarn you could even make yarn out of t-shirts which I'm going to show you how to do in another video so now down to the fringe it's going to what would do you want to do with the fringe so first off, you might want to trim it so it's nice and even, or you can leave it haphazard, up to you. Um, you know, does, do you want it this length or do you want it a bit shorter? Um, now on the other, this example which I made before, so these edges are literally like, like these edges. I've left them as they are. But you can also make them all fluffy like this. So... This type of yarn, so it's 100% wool, this type of yarn, and most yarn, you know, will do the same. You can literally, like, pull it apart as much as you want to kind of fluff it up and make it all fluffy. And you could do it just, like, a little bit on the end. 
You could have a funky, just little funky fluff on the end. Or you can go all the way down to the woven bit of your blanket and really kind of fluff them up. Like that. And obviously trim the ends. So I quite like them quite fluffy. Now there is another technique that you can do to fluff it up. And that is using one of these. Now this one is specifically for using with wool, but you can literally buy like a pet brush. So a brush that you'd use to, to comb or brush your dog or your cat. Really cheap online, easy to find. And they've got, you see, kind of little needle, not needles, but kind of a brush basically, wire brush, not sharp, um, that go at an angle. And you could literally brush the wool. So you have to be very gentle and you are going to get bits of wool coming off, so don't be alarmed by that. But if you're very careful, you can literally gently brush your wool and you get an even softer, smoother brushed effect. If you to start off with, if it's a bit kind of stiff, just kind of go like down and up. Don't really yank it. Do it very gently. And then as you, almost as if it's like tangled, you know, the, your cat's got tangled fur. It's got all knots in it and matted. So gently kind of brush it out. And then the gentler you are, the less you're going to, because you're obviously getting bits off it like you would on a pet. Um, gently brush it out. And you see how much smoother that is compared to, this is me just fluffing it apart. And then... This is me brushing it so you get a much smoother look. So you can have a go at that as well to get really nice smooth. So it depends again what look you like on the edges. And there's, there is a number of other things we can do on for fringes. And um, like tassels are adding extra texture and bits and pieces. And that one's pretty good. I, mean, I think you need to kind of pull it apart with your hands first to get it going you can't just start brushing it without having doing that and it's a lot easier then make sure you remove the fluff from your brush once it builds up a bit and then keep going go okay. and exactly the same goes for um if you use thinner, the thinner yarn. So you can do exactly the same with this. You can make it fluffy, you could leave it kind of as it is. I quite like this one, as it is. And this one's obviously gonna be a bit more time consuming and can be a bit fiddly, because you've got a lot of uh, warps and wefts on this one, but it's gorgeous. I love how that this one's come out, it's amazing. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed that and um, can't wait to, have a go yourself and I'd love to see you know what you'll come up with so please post your makes in the group and um, I will see you in the, the next video for the next exciting project. Many thanks, bye!